Okay, I hope you have your coffee ready because this one's a big one. Pie hole, Docker, Flask, Python, all kinds of stuff. We're gonna be using that to protect your family's network and you uh, from all kinds of distractions. Now this video is part two. The first video we set up OpenDNS to protect your family's network. It's a very simple and elegant solution, but we're gonna go a bit um, nerdier and geekier on this one. So if you love messing around with Linux or Docker containers or Raspberry Pis, like this is this is the one for you. And if you haven't already set up OpenDNS, go back to that first video and watch it. It's gonna be included in this one too. We're gonna combine the powers of OpenDNS with Pihole. Oh yeah. And I'll also show you how to do what I kind of gave you a sneak peek of in the first video. This, this is my pie hole. This is my black list of things I'm blocking. Nothing right now. Alexa, break the internet. Netflix, Hulu, and all the other fun stuff has been blocked. Ah, and if I refresh this page, there it all is being blocked. And if I want to have fun again, let's do this. Alexa, unblock my stuff. Yay, more Tiger King. And let's see if it happens. And it's gone. And real quick, the sponsor of today's video is CBT Nuggets. This is the place you wanna go when you want to learn all about IT. This is how I got my start in IT. It's actually how I became a network engineer. So if you love IT, if you love tinkering and you wanna turn this into a career, you wanna turn that hobby into a passion and a way to make money, check out CBT Nuggets. You'll find me on there. I have courses on there as well. So link below to check out my courses and you can pretty much learn whatever you want. CCNA, A+, CCMP, security, hacking, it's all there. Now we're going to have Pi-hole living inside a Docker container and that Docker container is going to live on a Linux machine. In my case, I'll be using a flavor of Linux called Ubuntu. Now you don't have to use Ubuntu. That's the beauty of Docker. You can run this thing anywhere. So whatever pretty much whatever flavor of Linux you have, it'll work great. And I'm gonna do mine actually in the cloud. My actual machine will be in the cloud. You can run yours in the cloud if you want. You can run this on a virtual machine in your own home, on your computer, wherever. And of course you can run Pi Hole on a Raspberry Pi, but we're doing Docker because I think that's more fun. So let's do this. So I'm gonna pick one of my cloud providers and spin up a new virtual machine for myself. I'm just gonna choose the latest flavor of Ubuntu. Ubuntu 20. And once I have this thing spun up and ready, we'll get started. All right, my virtual machine is ready. I'll grab his public IP address and launch my favorite SSH program, Solar Putty. I highly encourage you to download this program. Link below. It's free, totally free. And it helps out this channel just a little bit. So go do it. All right, so I'm going to SSH into this machine I have here. Now, there's one thing we're going to do real quick, and it's kind of an annoying thing that the later versions of Ubuntu uh, do. They run their own DNS server on the machine which is normally fine, but because we're installing Pi-hole to run as our DNS server, it's gonna have a bit of a conflict. So we're gonna have to disable that DNS server-like function on Ubuntu. And don't worry, it's just two commands. Let's do it real quick. The first command will stop the service. So I'll use sudo systemctl. Now this is Ubuntu specific. If you're not using Ubuntu, this probably won't be a problem. And I'll say stop systemd dash resolve duh duh service. That will stop it and then we will disable it. Changing the stop to disable and disabling it. Now we have a new problem though. If I try to ping google.com, it doesn't work because we disabled the DNS service. Easy fix though, check this out. I'm gonna quickly edit the resolver file here in Ubuntu. I'll do uh, my favorite editor. So I'll do sudo nano, which is the editor here. And then I'll edit the etc resolve without the e.com and i'll get on down here where it says name server you see name server is looking at itself and we're going to change this just to something whatever it could be your open dns server i'm just going to say google for now do control x yes get out of there so now when i ping google it works like a charm cool Let's clear that out now that we have the dns thing figured out we need to install docker if you don't already have it installed luckily it's pretty easy so we'll do a quick apt update to update our repositories Again, that was apt update, and that's not upgrading. That's just updating our list of what can be upgraded. Now we can install Docker. So I'll do sudo apt install, and the package is docker.io. Do I want to install? Yes. And here we go. Okay, Docker installed. Now time to set up a container. Now, if you watched my Docker video where I talked about what Docker is and we even played with it, and it was oh so fun. You'll know that when we start or create a Docker container, we use the docker container run command. Here, we are going to do that, but we're going to use a bash script that I have prepared to make this a bit easier because there are a lot of parameters and things like, you'll see, watch this. I'll go out to my uh, GitHub right here and let me zoom in a bit because it's tiny. 
Oh, and by the way, the majority of the script and pretty much all of it actually, I got from the Pi-hole people. So they are amazing. And check it out, it's just a bash script that's running the same commands we would normally run on the command line. The only difference being is that if you go down the route here, when we're specifying what Docker container we're going to use, I have one that I created. Now, again, I stole this from the Pi-hole people. I grabbed their container and then I modified a few things, mainly to do what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, to include Alexa in our fund. But again, this container is living out in the Docker world. Here it is in Docker Hub. I just uploaded it and seven people have already used it. That's weird and I haven't talked about it yet. <laughs> so that script will be creating this Docker container using this Docker image that I created earlier. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, we're gonna copy it. Let's take all this script right here copy and then getting back into my Linux machine, I will create a new file, sudo nano, and I'll name this pihole.sh. I'll jump in there and now I'm editing this file. I'll just uh, paste my stuff in there, control X and Y to get out of there. So if I list the contents of my stuff right here, ah, I've got pihole.sh. Now let's try to launch the script. I'll do dot forward slash pihole.sh. This is one of the ways we can execute bash scripts. Watch what happens. Ah, permission denied. Why? Is it because I didn't use sudo? Let's try that. Ah, command not found. Why? Well, because the file isn't executable. It has to have that attribute to be able to be executed. We can change that right now. Let's do it. So we'll do sudo. We'll use the command chmod or change modification. And then we'll use u plus x and then the file name, pihole.sh. We're changing the attributes of this file to be executable. Okay. Woo. Buckle your seatbelts, time to create a Docker container running pihole and flask and all kinds of stuff. So I'll do sudo dot forward slash to run our script and then it'll be pihole.sh. You ready? Here we go. Woo, look at that go. Pulling down my, uh, my image because I didn't already have it. Sorry, it's quite large. And now it's starting up my container. And what the script is doing is it'll make sure the pihole container starts up beautifully and then it'll provide you a quick password you can use to log in. And we are done. There, and here's the password it gave us. We can actually change that because I'm never going to remember that. And uh, I'll show you that here in a moment. But let's make sure it's running. So I'll do sudo docker ps to see our running containers. There he is. He's been up for 56 seconds. He's healthy and look at all our ports mapped. Now at this point, pihole is up. It's ready. Let's go check it out. Let's grab my password here, fire up my web browser, and I'll navigate to the IP address. Now, when you go straight there, it'll take you to this page. If you want to go to the admin panel, it'll do forward slash admin to get you there. Pie hole. Woo, we're here. Now, this page will show you some pretty stuff, but you want to log in and actually see some stuff, don't you? So let's log in. Click on log in at the left here, type in that new password, and log in. We are in. Not now. Okay, now just like that, Pi-hole is running in a Docker container. It's beautiful, it works. And if you point your DNS at it, you better believe it's gonna work. Now let's change two things real quick. First, let's set our password. Let's change it from that crazy password. And then we'll change the upstream DNS. So Pi-hole is gonna look to another DNS server to resolve its queries. Right now, I don't know what it's looking at, but we can change that to OpenDNS because you know we already have OpenDNS configured from the last video, right? Did you not do that? Go back and do that. So let's go change our password real quick. We'll get back into our Linux machine here. Let me clear my page here. And we're going to jump into our Docker container. We're going to jump inside like the Matrix or Inception. Yes, yeah, well, both. Both of those apply. Comment below which is your favorite movie, Matrix or Inception. I, it's, that's hard. That's a tie for me. I love those movies. Anyways, I'll enter the command sudo, ah, sudo docker exec. I'll do the switch dash i dash t or just do dash it. Specify my container name, which is pihole. If you use my script, yours will be pihole as well. And then I want to jump into the bash shell. I'm in. You'll know you're in when you see the machine change. Before I was in localhost, now I'm in blah, 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 which is my container ID. To change the password, we'll enter the command pihole dash a dash p. Easy enough, right? Enter your new password in. Once more, that was it. Pretty easy, right? Now let's go change our upstream DNS server. We'll go back to our web browser, and this is actually crazy easy. I'll go to settings on the left panel here. Ah, I gotta log back in. Thankfully, I have a new password that I actually know. Yeah, let me zoom in a bit. Um, we'll go to DNS on the top here, the tab, and we can select our upstream DNS servers. Here, I want to use OpenDNS. So I'll select the, uh, both of these here. And if you don't like OpenDNS, you have other options as well, or even 
go down here and enter your own upstream DNS servers. And then I'll scroll down all the way to the bottom and click save. And that was it to update it for OpenDNS. Like that was super simple, right? That's done. Now I don't like seeing zero queries here in my dashboard. So I'm gonna update my computer to use this real quick. I'm gonna point my DNS to the IP address of my pie hole. And let's test it out real quick. We'll do NS lookup. Let's try google.com. It works. Let's try facebook.com. And it's so cool, it actually shows and resolves my uh, <laughs> my DNS server to being at Linode, my cloud service provider right now. And if we go to, ah, what happened? Ah, look at that, all these queries that my computer's sending to Pi-hole. So we know it's working, that's great. Oh, I get excited about this kind of stuff. Don't you? Ah, look, it's already blocking stuff. Man, that's amazing. Pi-hole is, it's pretty cool. Like it's made stuff fast for me. Now time for the really, really fun stuff. Let's get Alexa involved. Let's have her automate our blocking or really whatever you want to do, but I want to show you blocking specifically. So here in Pi Hole, we have a whitelist and a blacklist. Our blacklist, of course, is sites we want to disallow, block. You can do it manually here, that's fine. Netflix.com, add it as a regex, ah, and it will block everything. But that's boring. We want to do it automatically with a bit of automation. Let's try it out. I'm gonna hop back into my Docker container, pseudo Docker exec IT pie hole bash. <laughs> 10 times fast, go. And I'm gonna jump into my home directory real quick by doing CD or change directory, go home. And if I do LS to list what's in here, I have one folder network. You'll have the same thing. It's gonna be identical because I created this Docker container and it's just the way I want it to be. It's so cool. I'll jump into network, so CD network, and I'll list what's in there now. Here's the secret sauce. This guy right here in the middle, network.py, that's a Python script. We're going to run that script and that's a magic that's gonna make everything happen. And then we have two bash scripts. One script to block the domains we wanna block and then one to unblock them and we wanna actually watch TV again. Let me show you those real quick because it might be something you wanna change. If I jump into, I'll do nano block domains.sh. All it is is a command, pihole, dash dash regex, and then the domains I'm wanting to block. In case you don't know what regex is, this is just a bunch of gobbledygook that makes sure that everything that has to do with hulu.com is blocked. Same for Netflix, Disney Plus, and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And you can just copy this format and substitute this middle term for whatever domain you wanna block. Amazon, whatever. And then looking at the other script, unblock domains, it's doing the exact opposite. It's nearly the exact same command, but then we have dash B, dash D, the dash D's for delete and the b actually means block so it's block but then delete these from your blacklist what do you say we test it out real quick let's test it so i'm going to do sudo python3 and then the file we have the python script network.py we're going to run this sucker and it's running it's good but how do we use it <laughs> let's do that right now I'm gonna fire up a web browser real quick and notice right now that my blacklist is empty. I'm gonna open up a number, another window here. I'm also gonna to navigate to the same address, but on a different port. Notice that when I look at my uh, script here, it's running on port 8080. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna to go to port 8080 and then forward slash is how we determine what we wanna do, block or unblock. Now this might feel weird and unintuitive and why would we even do this? I'll show you why. First, let's put in block. And it did it. Now, this might scare you, but it's okay. It's okay. It probably worked. <laughs> Let's go look at um, our terminal here. If I scroll up, we can see that it actually ran. That That's the command line output you want to see. And if I go back and look at my pie hole stuff, I refresh this page. Boom. All that stuff was just blocked. Amazing. Let's go unblock it. Click on this URL. Change it from block to unblock. It should have done it. Let's refresh. It's now taken away. Look at that. Automated. But then how do we add that to Alexa? Well, we're going to use IFTTTTTTTTTT. You ever used that before? Look it up. I'm going to navigate on over to IFTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTT
So looking back here at my block URL, if I change this from unblock to block, copy this, paste that in there, that's what we want to see. Now, I know many of you may be doing this on a NATed machine, meaning it has a private IP address in your home network. So it might be 192.168. whatever. IFTTT is going to have trouble accessing that URL. You need to have a public IP address like what you see here. Now, this is not a video on how to port forward on your router, but that's exactly what you have to do. So you'll have your public IP address of your home. So if you do it to Google right now and go, what's my IP address? That's what you'll put in there. And you'll specify port 8080. But then in your router, you need to port forward 8080 to the private IP address of that Linux server. And once you have that done, and it looks like this, that's all you need. I'll scroll down to the bottom and say, create action and finish. And that's it. And you'll create a similar one for unblocking and whatever verbiage you want to put in there or whatever trigger you want to have. So if I say, Alexa, trigger, break everything, it should work. Let's refresh it. Bam, just like that. That is pure magic. I love that so much. So it is blocking right now. Let's go test it. Let me go to uh, disneyplus.com. Nope, it ain't happening. Maybe hulu.com, nothing. And if I go look at Pi-hole and look at my query log, I can see hulu.com was very much indeed blocked. And I can see why right here, regex, beautiful. Oh, also Disney Plus down here. I love it when I can take what I want to learn and apply it to a real life project. And for me, that's, this was that, like Pi-hole, Docker containers, OpenDNS, Linux, like we had a bunch of things. And if you get to play with this, it's a lot. And if you were able to set this up, that's amazing. Like you have some skills. And if you want to build on those skills and take it a bit further and become more of a professional and have a job and a career that's amazing, kind of like what I do, link below. CBTNuggets.com is how I did it. It's who I work for now. We have the, ah, it's the best training in the world. I just got to tell you, the best IT training out there. So check that out. Now, if you did have some trouble going through the steps, it's fine. Like this is some advanced stuff. And if you want some help, we do have a, a whole group of people that can help you out. So check out the link below, join my Discord server. We have over 8,000 people in there who are probably more excited about IT than I am, and they're willing to help out. And some of you might be wondering, is Pi-hole even worth it? I think it is. Like, check out my dashboard right now. I've been running this in my network for about a week, and wow, look at all these queries. 26% um, of all the requests were blocked. Those are ads that don't even need to be in my network. And before they even reach the internet, before they even use my internet bandwidth at my ISP level, they're blocked. So things are being blocked, unprotected. It's wicked fast. Um, I highly recommend it. And when you combine it with a tool like OpenDNS, which will do more of the content filtering that uh, Pi-hole really doesn't do natively, you got a perfect solution. Well, guys, that's about it. If you like this video, well, like it. And uh, let me know below if you want to see more of stuff like this. Let me know if you're able to deploy this in your network. Um, it's fun. I, I just I had so much fun making this video, so I hope you had fun putting this into your network and, and just watching the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe. If you like what I do here, if you want to see more of it, hit that button. Well, whew, that's all I got. Go forth and prosper. Keep learning. Keep studying. Go block stuff in your network. Hack. I don't care. Do it all. I'll catch you guys later. Oh,